Hello and welcome to today's model workshop. Today we're going to be working on our Mustang cockpit and super detailing it from a basic kit piece to something that's a bit more impressive. So we're going to take it from this to this. So starting off with the cockpit, it's a pretty basic piece of kit here. So this is the Hasegawa 132nd P51 Mustang and this is our basic cockpit that we've got to work with here. So it's nice, it's got a bit of wood detail on the floor but this radio section here needs a lot of extra work involved. So I'm going to start with basically uh, painting a bit of wood texture on the floor there and then I'll cover that up with hairspray paint over it, scratch it back to look like it's worn wood and I'm also, while that's drying, going to do a bit of gubbins work, a bit of detailing with wire and scratch building up the back here to make our radio look a little bit more like the real thing. So, I'm going to get stuck in now and do this. Um, for the wood, if you have a look elsewhere on my video channel on YouTube, you can find how I paint wood there's uh, three techniques, three separate videos I've done, and I'm going to be using my first video, which is a beautiful technique. So I'll get stuck in now. So I've painted on the first coat there, which is Tamiya XF59 Desert Yellow, and then once that's dry, probably tomorrow, I'll paint over the top of that with some oil paints and then scrape it away, and that'll give us a beautiful wood grain finish. In the meantime, for detailing up this radio and battery pack up the back here. Um, I've got some styrene rod, some bits of styrene sheet, some wire, and some more wire. And just, you know, find a couple of references online. Don't feel too hemmed in by exactly what you need to do. Part of the joy of scratch building is just, you know, making it look plausible without getting too rivet countery. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to cut these up, add some detail, show you in a tick. With the wire, I'm planning to um, twist it together. So I'm going to get two long strands of the very thin wire, twist it together just to give that kind of um, braided hose effect that it seems to have from what I can see online. Should be cute. Now in order to make cables like these ones here, where they look sort of twisted. I've been doing exactly that. I've been twisting cables. So <clears throat> here's one that I prepared, and it is simply a matter of grab two bits of wire, put them in a peg, and twist. It's pretty basic. So I've got two bits of wire, a peg to hold the two ends, and Hopefully they'll stay nice and still, maybe keep a bit of pressure down, and then just start twisting the other end. Easy peasy. <coughs> um, yeah, the beauty of this, anyone can do it. Cut it to size, if you get it wrong, cut some more wire, it's pretty cheap. It's not the most visually fascinating to watch, but you get the idea. So yeah. There we go. One. Let's get it in focus. One beautiful twisted wire. I'll add that to my wiring now. Next I'm going to apply some oil paint. So I've got some Van Dyke Brown. <clears throat> ready to go here. This is for our wood section right at the front. And yeah, just paint it on. Nothing too special to say here. Once we've got a nice layer of that on there, we'll run a thick bristled brush through it and that'll give us our wood grain. So I'll keep going with that. There's our layer of oil paint. Here's our thick bristled brush. So it's been on there for maybe four or five minutes, not very long at all. Just time enough to sort of dry a little tiny bit. And I'm just gonna 
run this baby through it to get that lovely wood grain effect. There we go. You can see the effect. So I'm just going to have a little bit more of a play with that, try and make it maybe a little more artistic. Um, to be honest, I'm going to spray over the top of this with uh, hairspray and then spray it all again with cockpit green interior paint. So, you know, to be honest, you're not going to see most of this anyway. But, <clears throat> yeah, there's the effect. Once that dries, it won't look quite so three-dimensional and should be a pretty convincing wood. Pretty happy with that. If you do get too much on your brush, just wipe it off and have another go. Yeah, I'm happy. Here's the very basic pilot's seat. Um, I'm going to use just a little piece of strip styrene to add some supports on either side of it, just like that. And then I'm going to paint it silver, um, then hairspray, and then do interior green over the top of that, so that we get some nice chipping on that as well. So I might do that now. So I've got my hairspray, got my cockpit, I've painted parts of it aluminium, and this is where, and we've also got the wood there, we've also got the pilot's seat, and I'm going to spray them with hairspray, it's pretty straightforward, it is what it does, do it outside, this stuff stings, it doesn't have to be a very thick layer, just enough to cover it, bang, that's that, and same for the cockpits, the, the pilot seat. Done. Nothing special with the hairspray, it's the cheapest I could find. My next step is to deal with these little floor pedals, foot pedals. So, yeah, they're fine, but there's nothing special happening there. It just needs a little more detail. So, I've looked online, found some references, you know, I'm not going to worry about adding this moulded text or anything, there's no way I would be doing that. But what I thought might be useful is just to put like a little bit of wire or something around there just to give it a bit more detail. Because otherwise when it's sitting in there, yeah, you won't see much of it, but it needs it. So, once again, a bit of foil off the top of my whiskey bottle, and I'm just going to cut a piece off. Cut a similarly sized piece. If you had some spare photo etched metal that you could do this with, brilliant. And I'm just going to wrap those two pieces around the inside, just here and here. So I'll do that now. Again, it's not you know exactly scientifically got a purpose, or it's not quite historically accurate, but it just gives it extra texture and interest. So I've glued those bits onto the back with um, with CA glue. I'm not going to worry about these. Uh, pin marks there because it's on the back you're never going to see them. Let that dry and then I'm just going to wrap them around from the front, you'll be able to see them and paint over the top. Easy piece. Found another reference showing some more detail on the top of the chair so I figured I would do the same thing. So I've cut a little piece of wire, let's get some focus, a little piece of wire and that will sit at the top of the chair like that a little piece of board and a little piece of styrene rod to make it look like that. So yeah, again, keep on saying it, but just, you know, creative use of styrene and wire, basically. Let's do Here it. Here we go. So the downside is, I'm very happy with that, but the downside is that I'm going to have to, once it's dry, paint it silver and then do another hairspray coat so that I can paint the whole thing into a green and chip it away. But you know what? It's worth it. Glad I caught it. some references online for the instrument panel so I'm going to try and make this little grab handle here 
maybe this little sort of choke panel here, um, this wire outline that seems to be around the most important bits here, um, the most important gauges, I'm going to make that as well. So here's the instrument panel as it came from the kit. It's, look, it's pretty basic, but it's okay. Um, I'm sure it's a Mia 130 second Mustang would have a gorgeous instrument panel. This one, yeah, but there's room to improve. So once again, wire, bits of styrene, and I'm just going to add some details. Um, if you do have any questions while I'm doing this, when you see it, just chime in below in the comments as I can. So, adding on the thin wire around the most important elements turned into a bit of a disaster. Look at all that horrible glue. Just too thin. I wiped the wire through glue, I stuck it down, and the glue just splurged out. What are you going to do? Hopefully painting will cover it up. Maybe a bit of weathering. <clears throat> One little styrene dial there to replicate the choke. And then these little guys here, I hope that this can focus on them. It's getting pretty tiny. But these two, made out of very fine wire, are my little handles. So once they're painted red, a little glob of paint will hopefully cover up those little holes in the middle of them. But um, you can see how big they are. They're pretty, pretty tiny. Probably only about, what, four millimetres across? So I've got my little tiny drill. It's going to drill a couple of holes, probably one about here, maybe one about here. Oh, no, actually, that'll be too close to the gun site. Maybe one there, one here, and uh, just add some detail. Overall, fairly happy except for that big glob of glue. So now I'm ready to airbrush the interior. Um, I've masked off the bits that are meant to be wood. Well, they're going to be black eventually. And also the radio at the back there that's going to stay black. The rest is all going interior green. Um, I could have sprayed it all interior green and then masked off these areas and painted them the black rubber. But I'm just not quite sure with the hairspray effect if that would take me down to wood or if it would take me down to interior green when I scratched off the black. So I'm just playing it safe, playing it conservative and masking it and just doing it two separate lots of paint. So I've got that, I've got the pilot's chair and I've also got my interior halves here ready to go. So yeah, I'm just going to paint those now, yeah, get the airbrush out, see how it looks. Just finished spray painting and here's where we're at. So there's my interior green, a bit of colour modulation where the shadows are, there's still a lot of work to be done on those side walls, but you get the general gist of it. There we are as well, let's try and focus on the model rather than the grass. Um, I do all my air brushing outside, it's just a bit healthier. You know, I don't have any kind of fan set up inside. And <coughs> the cockpit, so again a bit of colour modulation just to make it a bit more interesting and finally the pilot's seat so yeah a little that dry you won't be able to see those sides where I held on a little that dry um, finally finally I also painted the instrument panel there but we'll get into that very soon so now I've masked off in order to spray my black spray so around the footwells there and also on the top of the radio so yeah Gonna airbrush that. I'm also not 100% happy with just grabbing something here. Also, not 100% happy with that interior green. It just feels a little too darkish and a little too greenish to me. So I'm going to spray a very thin kind of wash of yellow over the top of it, just to see if I can get it to a slightly more accurate colour. So yeah, I'll do that first, then the black, and then we'll see how we're looking. Um, I'm not going to show you the airbrushing. You guys know how to airbrush. I'll just show you the results. I realise I should probably tell you what colours I'm using. So for my interior green, I'm using Tamiya enamels and mostly XF58 olive green with a bit of a mixture of white, yellow in it. Um, so when I've taken the masking off, as you can see, it's already taken off a chunk of the green in that central area there. Um, and even there's a little bit worn off on the edge there already, so that's before I've even touched it with water. Um, I can make that work, that's not too bad, it's kind of the effect I was after. So I'm going to let that dry beautifully, let it all just harden overnight, and then come in tomorrow, get some water and have a little scrub at it and see what we can do. But overall, pretty happy, looking good. Okay, 
So, time to put it in the water. I'm going to start off with the foot pedals and maybe the seat at the same time. Give them a moment just to start to work. Pretty exciting video here. Let's take those foot pedals out and see if they're ready to go. So I've got a brush that I'm going to have a go at them with, a scalpel, and a toothpick. Yeah, not quite ready yet. Back in. And this is all there is to it. Try and get the visual on those in there for you. Yeah, this is all there is to it. So if the brush doesn't work, it's a fairly tough old paintbrush. Like I said, a scalpel or a toothpick to just grind at it. But I'm hoping to get quite a subtle, small chip effect rather than great big flakes of paint coming off. <clears throat> see how this works this time. Yeah, it's starting. So you can see those first little bits there. I hope you can see. I'll turn the light. It doesn't make much difference. I hope you can see those first little flakes there. I'll keep on going. Give it another minute more. Might do a little on the seat. Um, I would recommend try and work fairly fast with this. And I also find you don't really get a second chance. That's not quite ready yet. Yeah, you don't really get a second chance, so after it's wet the first time, if you dry it off and re-wet it, it doesn't really work. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try the toothpick. No, still not. Give it another minute. Two minutes and five seconds of nothing much to show you, sorry. Still nothing. Look, I'm going to do this. You get the idea of how it works. I'm going to do this and come back and show you in a second. So there we go. I've ended up using the scalpel on this one. Let's see if we get that in focus. Ended up using the scalpel and works a treat. So I'm going to dry that off before it keeps going. Move on to the chair, which is still in there. And I'll show you the final results soon. So here is our chipped cockpit. I'm pretty happy with that. The floor looks realistically worn. Try and not knock those out. Yeah, you get the idea. Um, yeah, seat. Yeah, I would have liked a little more tonal subtlety there in the chipping, but once there's some seat belts on there, it'll be fine. But yeah, pretty happy with that. A few chips up the back there. So, yeah, let's keep going with detailing. So here we are. We've got all our pieces painted. Uh, we've got our chipping done. Get nice and close for that. So I think it looks pretty realistic. Um, so now I'm going to start dry brushing and painting details like the leather head pad at the back of the pilot's chair there and also adding some of the pieces to the fuselage halves. Um, for, the fuselage halv for the fuselage halves and also for all those pieces there, I've also done a pin wash with some um, Van Dyke Brown oil paints, just thinned in thinner and splodged on around those raised details. And so it's definitely time for some dry brushing to highlight those pieces as well. I've also got the instrument panel here, which I won't pick up because it's so fragile. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Those little handles and everything. Pretty happy with those. Um, so yeah, it's just time to start dry brushing, including the instrument panel. And I'll show you what that's looking like after that. I'm assuming you know what dry brushing is. Uh, if you don't, do a quick Google. You'll find it. It's easy. Now I'm going to do a little bit of uh, dry brushing on the black areas, so on the instrument panel, on the radios, etc. I'm just using German Grey to highlight the detail in these areas, make them not quite so single coloured, so monochromatic. Try and not get my hands in front of it. And it just, yeah. Just brings out a bit of the detail, and again, not quite so monochromatic. So, 
hoping you can see that there. Let's try and I can see what we can do here. Oh, goodness me, great camera work. Anyway, look, you probably can't see it, but it does help. Trust me, take my word for it. So I hope you can see the difference that it's made now on these little pieces that are from the cockpit. So that piece there, this piece here, you can see the highlighting it's brought out. Just brings out a bit more definition. Um, the instrument panel I'll show to you. Yeah, again, you can see that quite nicely now, actually. All those dials have got detail brought out, the little rivets have got detail. Um, so now it's time to go in and paint all of these little instruments. It's a bit of a bastard. Um, all I can recommend is a steady hand, white paint, and a very fine paintbrush. So I'm going to just go in there, get yourself some references online, find out what the dials are meant to look like, use glasses if you have to, and just try and do it as steady as you can. Good luck. Here goes. I'm going to try and show you how I'm painting one of these pieces, just to give you an idea of what it's like. So, brush just slightly dipped in the white. And you know, kind of use the angle of the brush to your benefit. I do often just get off the globiest bits of it. There, look, it's you know, it's nothing amazing, but gives you an idea of where we're at. Don't forget to use red and yellow for highlights. So again, try and find your references online. It most definitely gives it a lot more interest than just plain old white. Here's the completed instrument panel. So, yeah, look, it's not perfect, but it's okay. For a scale effort, I think we'll be okay. Um, that little wire that I added on, painted that in yellow. Got my little two little grab handles in red. I think they add a lot of detail to it, certainly add a lot more interest to it, a lot more 3D, and yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, I've also painted a couple of the other pieces that go on the side walls of the cockpit, so once they're all dry, I'll put them in place tomorrow and show you what it all looks like. Next up, time to move on to seat belts. Ooh. I've done some research and I've found that this little piece here, which goes next to the pilot's seat, um, it's meant to be interior green, not black, and also these two little white things on top, I thought they were instrument dials, but they're actually meant to be like little turn handles for oxygen or something like that. So I'm going to make some out of modelling clay, little turn handles with serrations around the edges. So I'm just going to make a little sausage and then use a blade to make it into yeah, a sort of knurled dial. We'll see how we go. My daughter's helping out making something else with the modelling clay too. It's going to be cool. A muddy puddle. A muddy puddle. Excellent. Okay, that totally didn't work. It's just crap. Look at it. Um, really uneven circles. Just atrocious. Um, the effect I'm trying to achieve is something like those two trim wheels there. So I'm thinking I'm just going to take some styrene rod and file and just try and cut some grooves into the styrene rod and then just trim off two little discs of it. Fingers crossed that'll work better. So the file didn't work either so I'm just getting stuck in with a scalpel and just cutting little grooves in. I don't know, it looks a little bit feathered for my liking see how it looks in position, but I might just go with, you know what, a disc. And not fuck about, excuse me, pardon the language, not mess about with the, uh, the kind of serrated edge of it. Oh, I don't even know where that went. That was not a success. <laughs> okay, so the file didn't work, so I'm just going to stick, get stuck in with a scalpel. So all I'm going to do is just cut grooves into the end of the styrene rod and hope that it doesn't look too feathered 
and too messy. I'll have a look and see what it looks like in situ. And you know what? If it looks too crap, then I'll just go with a plain old disc of Starian Rod. Well, it looked crap, so Starian Rod it is. Um, yeah, this goes to show not everything you plan as a scratch builder will go according to plan, but rise and above it and just overcome. Inspiring. Here is where the cockpit is at at the moment. So since I spoke to you last, I've added some scratch built seat belts. Uh, I've done an entire video tutorial on that, so you can find that elsewhere on my channel. Really, really makes a difference, and they're brilliant fun to make if a little bit fiddly. And they're cheap as chips. All they're made out of is a little bit of masking tape and some wire. Give it a go. It's fun. Um, I have finished the battery and radio section up the back here, hoping that this actually gives you a sense of what it looks like, a bit more light on it. So added a little bit of plumbing, just you know, general here, there, everywhere plumbing. Uh, used those braided cords that we made really early on, a little bit more there, and basically all it is is just ugly as hell underneath. But none of that's going to be visible. <clears throat> the dashboard is also painted. I'll show that to you. So the dashboard is painted. I was going to start I was going to start putting some little drops of future into the dial, so I did it on this little tiny one here. But you know what? I actually found it's to try and replicate the effect of um, a glass dial, but I just find it's a bit distracting. It looks a bit too obvious and it kind of takes away from what's painted inside the instrument panel. So I'm gonna not do that, but yeah. Certainly, it's an option. Give it a go. So, it's time almost to start putting it together. I've also done the kit parts that go inside the two halves. Don't worry about those great big moulding ejector pin marks. They won't be visible. But yeah, look, it's not bad, but it's not great. And here's the other half. So you can see the things that bother me are where those little ribs don't connect with the actual pieces. So, for example, just here and here where those little ribs don't connect down with the equipment. So I'm going to hide that with some wiring. But when I put this cockpit floor and sides, excuse the wobbly camera, oh my goodness. Yeah, excuse the wobbly camera. Terrible camera work. Focus. Bingo. When I put the cockpit floor into the side, you'll see where there's some room to still move. Get this out of the way. Bye. Probably could have cut this into two scenes, you know? That would have been a bit more interesting for you guys. Alright. That's where it sits. So, you know, look, it looks okay. But down the side of the chair there, I don't know if you can pick this up, there's definitely a bit of a gap. Let's try and show you. Definitely a bit of a gap down the side of the chair there. Um, where we could put some more wiring coming into that black instrument panel and there's definitely room for a bit more wiring sort of down in that dead space between the rudders and the chair. The instrument panel does have to go in that area but there's definitely room for that. Uh, as well I wanted to put some general plumbing just in these little gap areas just here between that and that. Just that little empty piece just there. So again, just a little bit more generic wiring. Um, you know, use some different gauges, different thicknesses of wire, so it's not all the same, same. And I'll show you what it looks like in a mo. And there we go. There's my scratch-built pipe work on the inside. Oh, wobbly camera. Um, yeah, 
I, you could paint this green, match the cockpit interior, but I'm going to leave my natural metal just because it will actually stand out a bit more and look a bit more interesting. So I'll do the same on the other side. It's all just you know, suggested detail. And uh, I think it's about time to start putting it all together. So I did also put some small brackets on this, just made out of, again, whiskey wire and painted over them, so those are those kind of rectangular brackets you can see holding them in place and I did paint some of the wires, the big thicker wires just looked a bit too crazy in full metal so I painted them interior green. Here's the cockpit, ready to go and I think you know, I'm really happy with it all, let's do this. Well, I think we're ready to put it all together so I'm gonna stick it all into the two halves of the fuselage and see how we're looking. Wish me luck. I do know already that the fuselage, the nose here, is not going to line up very well. This top piece of the nose on both sides is a bit out of whack, so it could be a bit of swearing and cursing that happens there, but we'll see. I'll show you in a tick. Here it is. Cockpit in place. Waiting for the glue to dry. Engine in place. We'll just leave it overnight, see how we look in the morning. And here is the end result. So the two halves of the fuselage are put together. Still a lot of cleanup to be done, still a lot of work to be done on the whole model. But the cockpit, I'm pretty happy with. Um, you can see the detail inside. The seats, belts really bring it to life. Plenty of detail on the walls of the fuselage. Let's try and zoom in a little bit there. But yeah, you get the sense of a lot happening in there. And, you know, I'm really, really happy with it. The floor has come up nicely, the wooden floor, nice and chipped. The only thing I'm perhaps not happy about is um, just this little piece at the back of the headrest here, but I'll see what I can do with that. That's a small fix, easily done. The batteries look great, the radio looks great. Lots of detail on the inside on that wall, and the instrument panel. I'm very happy with that as well. So look, I hope this has been helpful, guys. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free, chime in down the bottom and keep your eyes peeled for more videos coming along. Um, next one will be the gun bays in the wings and then there will also be the wheel well underneath and down the carriage. There's the engine that was in a previous one. Um, yeah, hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, please do chime in and I'll see you next time at davismodelworkshop.com. Cheers. Bye.